Good evening, sir. Mark, are you uh, good to go there, Superintendent Eads? It's six o'clock, and I'm good. I think all our board of managers are here. Yes, ma'am, I'm ready. Okay, good deal. Well, welcome everyone. Great to have you here today. And um, you probably will not see my screen, but I do. Uh, I have to transition over, so I don't think it's going to toggle back and forth. Miss Luann, are you on board? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, I couldn't get it unmuted. <laughs> How are you? Good. And yourself? Yes, ma'am. I'm well. Good. Okay, then we're all squared away. I don't know what it is about uh, Miss Luann being on board. It makes me much more comfortable <laughs> because then she gets all the logistical uh, votes and all that good stuff taken care of. So we're good. Please let me know if my mic is too loud. I did make an adjustment there. Uh, please let the record uh, show that there is a quorum present. Dolores Sendejo, uh, present. Uh, Lana Clinch. Present. Bela Mijares. Present. Bruce Brennan. Present. And Jesse Hernandez. I'm present. Yeah, thank you. The time is now, it's actually 6.01 uh, p.m. Thursday, April 23rd, 2020, as President de Dolores Sendejo, Call this regular meeting of the Southside Independent School District Board of Managers to order. At this time, uh, yes, we would like to welcome all our guests and our community members that are out there uh, joining us live this evening. Uh, such a great week and um, lots to celebrate as we transition uh, next uh, here in the next week to the final month of the academic school year. So again, we thank you for being here and. Um, Let's get started here. Please know that this meeting is being held and has been posted in accordance with Government Code Chapter 551 State of Texas Open Meetings Act. If during the course of this meeting, the, course should, the board should determine that a closed or executive meeting or session of the local board is required, then such closed or executive meeting or session could be held as authorized by the Texas Open, Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code 551. At this time, we'd like to uh, transition over to presentations and information. Our first presentation updates on child nutrition, technology, and academy. Superintendent Eads. We're going to have three different presenters today, and we're going to start off with uh, Mr. Isagiri. So, Mr. Isagiri, if you'll take the floor, please, and give us the updates. Yes. Uh, so, as you know, good evening, everybody. Uh, so, as you know, just like Welcome, uh, every sir. other just like uh, every other uh, school district here in the county have been providing uh, meals for our uh, community. And I just kind of wanted to give you an update on the number of meals served, the participation that we're having out there. Um, as of last Friday, these are numbers as of last Friday, uh, for the month of March, we have uh, pretty much um, served approximate, this is counting both breakfast and lunch, a total of 23,100 meals. Uh, for the month of April, which is not ended, we still have about uh, seven days from the last count. Uh, we served approximately 45,000 meals. So it's kind of doubled from one month uh, to the other. Our, our numbers are getting a little bit better as we're reaching out. We're now delivering on buses. Um, so our total number of meals as of last Friday uh, combined breakfast and lunch, we had a total of about 68,400 meals served. Uh, that, that's a lot of meals. That's a lot of participation. Um, on that other note, we are also beginning this week, we are starting to serve the uh, supper program. So we we'll also be serving them breakfast, lunch and a supper meal. And just this past week, we just got uh, the award to be able to serve our community a weekend meal. So on Fridays, we'll be serving them the uh, uh, their meals for that day. And then we'll be giving them weekend meals uh, until the following Monday. So at least we have them covered. We do have them covered for the for the for the whole week, at least. Uh, so, so Jenny Ramirez and her staff have been doing a fantastic job uh, in, in, in reaching out to our community. I will say transportation has pitched in and uh, added more bus stops to serve more students. So we are getting out there to, and serving our, our students as well. So 
On, on the flip side of that, uh, as you know, Mr. Scamilla in our food pantry, uh, I want to say that uh, his numbers have increased uh, pretty dramatically as well. Uh, he is an official partner as we speak with the, with the food bank. Uh, before this pre-COVID uh, pandemic, we were serving about 2,000 uh, members. Uh, just last week, we served a little over 4,000. And this next coming service, we're projecting to serve a little over 6,000 meals. So um, the need is out there, but uh, we are making sure that uh, we they get out there to the community. Mr. Eads. Okay, thank you, sir, very much. Um, uh, we also want to extend a thank you to the San Antonio Food Bank for assisting us. They've been a, a great partner for us, Eric Cooper. We appreciate what they're doing as well. So, uh, Ms. Endahel, we'll transition over now to technology, and Mr. Herring will make his presentation at this time. Mr. Herring, are you ready? Yes, sir, I am ready. Good evening, Madam President, uh, Board of Managers, Mr. Eads, and everyone um, in this meeting. It's good to be with you guys today in this uh, time that we're living in. Um, just wanted to give you a brief update on the technology world that's currently going on at Southside High Street. So this is a, uh, a two-parter. Um, I'll be basically doing a really, really brief presentation on the technical side of the equipment side, and then I'm going to pass it off to our instructional technology coordinator, Maribel uh, Garcia. So um, the equipment that we have handed out uh, so far, so we've given out, and this is uh, based on today's numbers, we've given out a little bit, or uh, we've assigned 1,300 Chromebooks, um, and we have assigned 300 uh, internet hotspots so far. We just barely got those in, or we started giving those out on, on Monday. So um, it, it's, been, it's, it's been a challenge for us. We've, we've been able to, uh, to work through, through everything that's going on. Um, thank you to, you know, um, everybody that has supported us through um, these times with the needs that we, we have been meeting. Um, right now, I'm going to transition off to uh, let me share something else with you here. Bye, Bill. Go ahead. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's so good to finally be part of showing you what some what are some things we're doing with instructional technology. So. Hi, I'm Maribel Garcia. I am your Instructional Technology Coordinator. And um, I did put a brief presentation together for you so you can kind of see everything that we're doing so far on that instructional side. So I'm gonna go ahead and also present my screen. And I did share this with um, the Board of Managers, but I'm gonna go and share like I said. Okay. Alrighty. So basically, um, as you know, uh, we are a G Suite district. Uh, that means we have everything Google that's available to us through education, through their educational platform. Um, so we have, at first, we immediately started building websites with our Go Digital website for parents and students, along with our teachers. We have our website for parents and students that has all of the important links that they will need. Um, tutorials to how to log into their Chromebooks, how to log into Clever, how to log into each of those pieces that they'll need while they are working from home. And it also has many resources that we have found to be um, important for our parents to have access to. Uh, so if that's other, both of these websites are both evolving as we go, changes as we go, as things become um, necessary to make sure they keep up to date with. We also have it for teachers, the Beaks Up Keep Soaring uh, website that has all the updates and resources for teachers in particular, uh, tutorials, ways to find the different videos that I've created uh, on our YouTube channel. So we have both of these places that provide the re resources for our families and teachers who are working from home. So we also, uh, our form of communication when it comes to uh, teachers getting a hold of students and parents at home. We use our Google Hangout Meets, which is what we are all using today. And they use that on a weekly basis. They have maybe some short instructional time where their teachers are teaching or there's a read aloud or if it's a check-in. Um, this example here is a book club that's happening at Pierce Elementary. Uh, so there's a lot of great things happening with our Google Hangout Meets. And we have also have given access to our teachers to
get Google Voice numbers, which is basically where they're able to call their students using a, I don't want to say a fake number, but it's not their personal phone number. So Google Voice provides that opportunity for the teachers to contact their families at home without using that personal uh, part of it. So Google has been tremendous in helping us communicate with our parents at home with these two apps themselves. Um, then we have obviously been using Google Classroom as our main platform for everything instructional technology wise. So we have two versions for instruction. We have the low tech and the high tech. The low tech are the things that we're using as far as consumables that our district has purchased uh, through our adoptions or maybe they're different like journaling pieces that our teachers are putting together for our students at home who do not have a strong internet access or you know don't have as many pieces as many devices as they need for their entire family but for those who are choosing to do the high tech option um, this is where we are posting everything so our teachers all classroom teachers have created classrooms for their students um, so every teacher has one <laughs> Uh, teachers are also interacting with students by providing feedback, whether it be on their activities or throughout the day, just kind of like little questions, check-ins, whatever it may be. And again, where we post all of our um, instructional pieces every two weeks. So within these choice boards and workbooks that we're sending home that are part of our instruction, we are providing video support for both students and parents and visuals. So all of the pieces that we're sending home are not just saying, here you go. We're showing parents and students how they are to use the technology that they have. So we've been providing a lot of that support. So we've also, um, our academic workbooks. This has been a really big thing for us. Uh, the first two rounds, we weren't doing workbooks, we were doing choice boards, which are great. It's you know formatted like a, a bingo uh, card, but it was too much option for them. And we were getting a lot of feedback that it was just too much. There were too many tabs open when they were working through the high tech pieces. So we actually just changed it to academic workbooks. And it's basically just a digital workbook that we're sending where everything is in one place. The student only needs to open it one time. They're able to work through all their activities over the course of two weeks. And it's so much easier for them. We've received a lot of really good feedback from parents so far. And it's only been three, four days, three days since they've had the workbooks. So it's, it's really awesome. Um, these workbooks are used for both elementary and middle school. Everything is teacher created um, with support from the instructional coaches and the district specialist, uh, including Dr. Spohr. We are providing all those videos and visuals for support. And it's, everything is very student and parent friendly. Uh, because ultimately our parents are also having to learn technology at home. So that's been fun for them, I'm sure. Uh, our high school is using choice boards for all subjects. Again, teacher created. Um, they provide office hours throughout their, their week for their students to join in on Google Hangout Meets. So they can provide support for the activities going on uh, with their students. And then as a focus for everybody, we are not focusing so much on grading, but more of that feedback that our teachers are providing to the students uh, regarding their work and the things that are being turned in. But to give you a little glimpse of our academic workbooks, um, on top of these two pictures, you will see some, like in the workbooks, everybody has different pieces showing the parents what each thing means. So for instance, this right here explains that if they click on it, it'll take them to another link or another video or a website somewhere. If they see this box, it'll be a helper box and that the student and parent knows that they can go to that box and get some information that the teachers felt would be helpful for them as they guide their way through uh, the activities. And we have a second grade teacher who is uh, who did an instructional piece where she is teaching repeated addition on her fridge. So her students are able to understand what uh, the activities are leading to. And then our middle school, same thing. They do more of the audio support. So they have these little speakers where they've recorded themselves and then inserted into Google Slides. So they're doing a lot of support with the audio feature, but also video. So there's lots of links in the workbooks that are very helpful for our parents and students at home. So with that said, instructional technology has also, um, with the guidance of Dr. Hayes, put together a phase one PD that all of our staff, all of our teachers and staff are required to go through um, learning about Google itself. Because one thing ever since I've, I started in July, there was one thing I noticed is 
we have all this technology, but teachers haven't had that opportunity to receive training or just the opportunity to play with the things that they have in their classroom. So we are definitely taking this time to make sure that all of our staff is proficient in using Google. So what I did was pick our major Google apps that we are working on right now, uh, such as Google Classroom, Google Forms, Google Slides, Google Meets, and then using our Drive, Gmail, and Calendar. So we took those pieces and I created these different PDs that take them through videos of instruction, but then gives them that hands-on experience where they are able to kind of manipulate and play, explore uh, these different apps uh, that they have to do tasks and create different things. So they really are becoming proficient um, in these in these different G Suite apps. So that's been really awesome to see. Now, you know, with anything, there is some, I don't want to do this, but they are all doing it and they're all doing a really good job. So they're definitely getting feedback um, as well from myself and their campus admin. So I'll show you really quickly what one looks like, what one of the final products looks like. I want to showcase some of these things for you. Our teachers are working really hard. And one thing that I had them do with Google Slides is they had to create a journal about their life, you know, living through this COVID pandemic. So I had them share pictures and videos of what's going on at their house. So I'll just pick this first one. Um, they had to share their favorite food now that everything is closed down. But again, they're having to explore using these Google apps and learning how to use them, you know, not only themselves, but how they can use it in their classroom. And I'm getting a lot of information of, oh, I can use this for this time, or I can use it as an opening. But all of our teachers are creating different journals in Google Slides and all of the different G Suite apps. So that's been really awesome to see. I'm having a really good time going through all of these. Okay, so. And they're also using a reflection piece. So after each of their training, they can do one of two things. They can record themselves explaining what their favorite thing about these apps are, or they can get on Twitter and share something on there. So right now, I think I have over 500 videos for each of our, um, or for all of our topics that we're going over. So that'll be fun to go through, but all of them are sharing what they're going to use it for and uh, one of their favorite things that they've learned so far. So they're doing some reflection as well. As I said, they're using Twitter. So I have many people posting. I've shared some resources by two, by two really awesome um, ed tech celebrities, as we call them, um, Casey Bell and Eric Kurtz. So a lot of them are diving into their resources and sharing the different uh, pieces that they're learning. So as you can see here, it's not just our teachers. It's also our central office instructional admin along with our campus admin. I have an instructional coach, Ms. Cantu, who's working on it as well. So everybody in Southside is going to be proficient with Google. Um, just some real quick shout outs. I have to share these because there are some awesome things going on with technology. Minchaka is blowing up Facebook. So awesome. They are using it as a platform to do read alouds with their students and to post different things from each of their uh, art teachers, their music teacher, their PE coaches, and their technology teachers. They're just, they're doing really awesome over there with their Facebook. Um, Pierce Elementary, they're not only taking what they're learning in these PDs, but then they're having their students do these, uh, do it as well. They have book clubs going on, art challenges. They're going to have a virtual field day, which I think is going to be so much fun for our kids. There's a lot of great things. And I also just heard about Dr. Gino at, uh, I can't say his last name, but Dr. Gino, um, he is actually going to take a Harvard class that's free with his daughter um, over game development. So a lot of our teachers are not only growing with the things that I'm sending or that they're finding, but they're going out and beyond. So even though I know like technology is, is a challenge for some, some of them are really just diving in and having fun with it and taking the opportunity to learn even more during this time. But that is instructional technology in a nutshell. I wanted to showcase a few things for you so you could see some great things that are happening with our teachers throughout our district. Um, it's just really awesome. So, Mar Maribel, I, I want to uh, highlight you a little bit too. You, you've been a great asset uh, to our school district. We're glad that you're part of the team. 
we just for y'all to know this, she almost didn't come because the first week she was here, we gave her free food and she got food poisoning. So we didn't think she was going to stay with us after that, but she did. You've been a great asset. And also I want you to know that last week I was talking with one of the teachers and he's one of our seasoned veteran teachers. And he shared with me that uh, he's having to learn with his students. And it's some of the best teaching that he's done is learning with his students. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you so much. And then we'll transition now. It's really part of the academics is what Maribel just did. But Dr. Hayes, um, if you will get on board now and go ahead and do your presentation. Unless you have questions. I'm sorry. I, uh, Ms. Indejo, do you all have questions for Maribel? I, uh, uh, Superintendent, these, I don't have questions. I did want to share to, uh, with Ms. Garcia. Uh, I am a parent of a kindergartner at Menchaca. So we get to experience everything you just spoke about. Uh, my, my little one, Lorenzo, he hangs out with his teacher, Ms. Fuentes, and it is amazing to see them on, on Tuesdays and Thursdays in their lesson. You have Mr. T, uh, delivering his lesson, uh, for, uh, music with pots and pans and Ms. Lopez from the library, Ms. Gonzalez and art. It is, it has been truly, uh, a time for us. Uh, there is some patience that we have to, to grow because we do uh, take the time between myself and my husband and my two older kiddos to cite words. Uh, it's, a, it's a major transition. And please know that all, all the uh, constant uh, communication that comes out, tips, I, I know for a fact, uh, is uh, definitely helping our parents uh, through, through all of this. Thank Just a so comment much. there. Yes, thank you. Superintendent E. W. You call Dr. Hayes. Dr. Hayes. Dr. Hayes, are you available, sir? Are you ready? I am, sir. Okay. Uh, just trying to get my my mic on. Uh, is, uh, you know, I, good evening, uh, Mr. Uh, Board of Managers, uh, Madam President, Mr. East. Thank you very much. Uh, as Mr. East said, a lot of what Maribel said uh, is what we're doing in academics. Uh, but I do want to just uh, give you a little bit of inf information. And before I begin to uh, provide you that information, uh, I'd like to say a special thank you to everyone who's uh, been involved in making this dramatic change in what we do. Uh, when we, you know, when we left school the first week of March, no one had any idea what was going to happen or what we we're going to be asked to do. When we got back. We've changed how we perform the central function of our organization in less than two weeks. We were asked to do that. While I'm confident that our face-to-face -face instruction would have produced better results, I'm equally confident that our emergency plan, if you want to call it that, has been an effective approach. I want you to hear what I'm going to say right now because I think it's significant. We have reached 91.7% of our students. And I'm going to tell you what that means because that's not just calling them. That's not just making contact. That means that we have gotten work from these students electronically or through paper submission, almost 92% of our students. And I think that's an amazing number. Uh, it wouldn't have been possible without the support and the, and the first of all, with your support and the purchase of those technology devices that we asked in March. Uh, you know, we didn't know how long this was gonna go and you know, a quarter of a million dollars sounded like a lot of money for two weeks, but now here we are going into what's gonna end up being nine weeks. So. It wouldn't have happened without your uh, uh, involvement in that. It wouldn't have happened without the hard work of our principals, campus administrative and support teams with our teachers. Uh, our teachers have just been amazing, as, as Ms. Garcia said a little bit ago. Our counselors continually call them. I live with one, so I know. Uh, she, she's, she's always on the phone. We actually had one text us at 3.20 in the morning the other day, uh, other day and uh, I was not nice to her, but, uh, but she was. Uh, also, the support at the district level has been really well with uh, Dr. Bernie, Dr. Spohr, Dr. Bell, uh, Ms. Bermea, and all those who are involved with that. You know, I meet with a group that we've called the COVID-19 administrative team. I meet with that uh, team two times a week for at least two hours a day, or two hours a meeting. Every campus principal is on the team. Additionally, I have a meeting with each principal, or with all the principals, excuse me, every Wednesday for at least two hours. All of these meetings, I believe, have resulted in a solid plan for continuing instruction in Southside ISD. We have a COVID-19 shared drive where we keep all of our work. And I'm gonna try to show that to you real quickly. Uh, it's, again, it will be very quickly. Uh, 
This is the COVID-19 shared drive. And you can see all the items that are down here. Uh, I'm just gonna pull one up. This is the work that we, that our campus had put together. The work for packet number three, which uh, went out today. You can see all the grades that are in there. So you can see that we have a lot of things in this COVID-19 folder uh, going back here in this file. All Dr. these Hayden, can, yes. can we share, can you share your window? Can I do what now? Share your window there. Are you Did not you seeing that? No, it's not, it's not coming through, Fred. Well, let's try this button. Share. How was that one? Now it's working. It's, is it? Can you see it now? Yes, yes sir. sir. We can. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, folks. This this is the drive that we have that's shared with the entire uh, academic team, the COVID academic team. This is the work that's to be presented or to be printed. This was the work that went out today, and then it's by grade level. So you, you can drill on down and see everything that's on there. Uh, uh, Ms. Garcia showed you a lot of that, but everything that we do with as it relates to COVID-19 and the work that we've done since COVID-19 is in this shared drive. And you can see there's a lot of work in this drive. Uh, it, there are a number of folders in there. The PD phases that Ms. Garcia talked about earlier, we have a plan for uh, students who have no technology distribution plan, what we're going to do with that. Middle school, high school specific stuff, the communications that Ms. Rincon's team's put out. So all of our work as it relates to COVID-19 is in that drive. So I'm going to stop presenting now and go back to uh, the, the prepared remarks that, uh, that I had. Uh, you know, as, as I said earlier, le learning is our central focus. It's why we exist as a school district. We want you and the community to be assured that this team is exploring every option available to us. Uh, and as I said at the beginning, we're, I'm very proud of the efforts, but, but knowing that we're gonna have some learning gaps, we've put together a learning, a, a task force, a learning gaps task force that has the responsibility of developing a plan to address learning gaps that are a result of the lack of face-to-face -face instruction that we've experienced this last nine weeks. Some of the things that they're looking at are in, include a summer program for all students, uh, a focused restart in the fall that is centered around concepts that would uh, have been taught this spring, but we'll, we'll start off with those concepts in the course that they, they go into. Uh, we'll also be get, uh, looking at a beginning of year assessment plan to establish a baseline of the missed knowledge and skills that would have been uh, uh, maybe uh, present as a result of this and a lot of other plans to address the anticipated learning gaps. So that learning uh, gaps task force work uh, will also be put in that shared drive and uh, be communicated with everybody who's involved with uh, developing the academic plan. So, so I, I want the board to understand uh, and Mr. East to understand that the academic team has worked extremely hard, but it, uh, it wouldn't be possible without the support of the other folks who spoke before I did uh, to put this plan together. So. I open the floor uh, if you have any questions for me or uh, Mr. Ease, if you have anything that I didn't share that I should have. No, I think you covered it well, Fred. Uh, so Dr. Hayes, that was that was good. Thank you. Members of the board, any uh, board of managers, any uh, questions? Madam President, Velia Minhadis. Question, yes, Dr. Hayes. Um, Dr. Hayes, the hotspot that we provide at Menchaca, how many uh, cars or what sort of tally do you have as far as accessibility to that okay, hotspot? Oh, thank you. Did you tell me about it? <laughs> Say it again. Somebody I, uh, said something. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll answer that one, Fred, because I just talked to uh, Mrs. Gary about it. Uh, we've been having security uh, go up there as well, and we uh, – uh, have not had much activity. It's usually just one or two cars. Um, Mr. and Gary and I were discussing it uh, uh, Wednesday, and uh, it's just not being maximized uh, as much as we anticipated that. Now, also, you have to realize, too, that we put out 300 hotspots throughout the district, so that uh, may have eliminated that problem as well. Uh, Mr. and Gary, do you have anything to add to that, Dr. Hayes? No, sir, that, that, is, that, is, that is accurate. Thank you. Madam President, if I may, just hit on this. Yes, Jesse. Hello, hello. 
Hi. So uh, good good evening, everyone. I just want to take a quick moment to to thank everyone for the different presentations. And I'm in awe. I wrote down some numbers here just to Mr. Um, Salvatore, just to to learn about the sixty eight thousand meals and and many more thousands that are coming. That's just amazing. And uh, I get to see um, you know being in the neighborhoods and going around for the walks. It, I tend to do that during the meal times and, and I get to see the team in action and, and the families coming out to get the meals and how very much appreciative, appreciative they are of having that and how easy it is for them to be able to have that uh, for the kiddos and, and very much a, a valuable meal. So thank you so much to everyone on behalf of us uh, for all their great work. And, and just to add on that, you know, the, the 1300 Chromebooks and the hotspots, uh, and then to to wrap it up with the great uh, technology that Ms. Garcia was sharing with us, um, and just a really creative ways and to to go with with the uh, Dr. Hayes as you put it, you know, having having to go away on spring break and then come back and not really come back, but come back to a whole different world and having to adapt in such a short amount of time, and it's it really feels I get goosebumps just to to see how everybody's been able to adapt and and do their best with the resources that we have. So thank you so much for, for every one of you. And please pass that along to everybody else uh, within the district uh, for all the great work that's being done and the great learning that's happening because of the great efforts that's going into it. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Uh, Superintendent Eads, if you're good, we'd like to transition over into the next presentation uh, in actually information review of financial statements for uh, February 2020. And yes. we also have March. And um, this is the one that we had on the board uh, meeting for last uh, month that was canceled. We didn't we pulled it. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Osborne, do you have any additional comments? I know we said out about that. Uh, anything that you want to highlight for the board at this time, sir, on B or C? Uh, Madam President and uh, Board of Managers, uh, good evening. I, again, I would just like us to, if we'd focus on the latest data, right, the uh, March data, and also uh, for everyone just to recall that this information is always in arrears by one month. But if you recall, the month of March, right? We had spring break and then we didn't come back to work. So that really reduced the amount of uh, spending activity uh, for the month of March. And e even since then, our, our activity has been pretty much focused on distance learning and technology. But uh, revenue is uh, right on track. Spending is lagging a little bit behind. But from my perspective, oh, I'm, I know we'll catch up. Um, but uh, we're still on track to uh, end with positive addition to fund balance uh, as we approach the end of the year in August. But I, I would be happy to talk. Haven't seen you guys. Um, so I'm sure there's a lot of things we want to say. Board of Managers, any questions? I know that uh, you received the documents and you might have to toggle back and forth on, on that. Um, I, I do have a, a question uh, for you, Mr. Osborne or Superintendent Eads. Uh, I know as we transitioned in early uh, mid-March uh, through COVID-19, um, I believe I, I just failed to ask uh, um, Superintendent Eads as far as just the the process uh, for documenting and coding uh, COVID-19. Can you speak to that? Or is that something that superintendent needs can? I and that's I all I have on finances. I certainly can address that. Uh, and also note that these documents wouldn't really even uh, demonstrate any COVID spending at this time because we were just getting started. So you won't, you won't see any COVID expenditures until the next report. But however, uh, with coming with some FEMA reimbursement experience myself and working through some natural disasters, we promptly began to set up some special accounting codes with an object, sub object code of CV for COVID uh, in the account code string. 
so that we could record uh, all the COVID expense, direct expenses to those codes so we can easily recall those uh, as we get further down the road. Mr. Thank Osborne, you, Ms. Sandell, Mr. Mr. Osborne, because of his experience at Houston ISD and what he had gone through, he was Johnny on the spot when we got started with this and made sure that we were documenting appropriately. So, Mr. Osborne, thank you for the knowledge and expertise you brought to this for us as well. Thank you, Superintendent. It's looking at, uh, forward to those numbers here in the near future as well. Uh, Ms. Sandejo, we have no public comments. Thank you. I just lost my, uh, my document here. So yes, we do not um, have uh, public comments here listed and I will transition over to consent agenda. Uh, at this time, we do have consent agenda a items A through F as you have had time to, uh, to review. Uh, Board of Managers, do I have a motion to approve consent agenda items A through F? Madam President, I move that we approve consent agenda items A through F. Thank you, Mr. Jesse Hernandez. Motions I, Dolores Sendejo, will second, and I will go ahead and call uh, for roll call. Ms. Luann, if you can just jot them down, I will. Uh, name out the uh, the managers. Dr. Clinch. Can you hear us there, Dr. Clinch? I did see her a bit yes. ago. I said no. Thank you. I'm sorry. My vote is no. No, okay. Bruce Brennan? All right. Vela Mijares? Aye. Bruce Brennan? Aye. Right. Dolores Sendejo, yes. Uh, Ms. Luann, did you get that? Motion approved. Moving on to new business, discussing possible, uh, moving on to new business action item one, discuss and consider approval of the ninth through 12th grade ELAR adoption for the 2020-21 school year. Dr. Hayes is going to address that for us. I'll address it for you. I don't know. We I guess we lost him there for a second. Um, this is just for uh, preparation for next year's 9 through 12 ELAR uh, adoption for materials um, for the 2021 school year. We have the, we have the committee that does the review and uh, makes their recommendation. Sorry about that. You might have heard some noise there. I uh, had to plug up my computer. I was going to die. There. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for Superintendent Eads? Thank you. Do we have a motion? Yes. Madam President, I move that we approve the ELAR adoption. Uh, thank you, Vela Mikadis. Motions. Do we have a second? I second. I Dr. Clinch seconds. Uh, roll call, Vela Mikadis. Aye. Uh, Dr. Clinch. Aye. Bruce Brennan. Aye. Jesse Hernandez. Aye. Dolores Sendejo, yes. Motion passes. Ms. Luana, I hope you're, you're capturing that as well. I'm trying to do my best on it. Uh, 
Action item number two, discuss and consider approval of HMH renewal contract exceeding 50,000. That's a Houghton Mifflin uh, textbook materials. It's an annual contract that we, we renew every year. And uh, be totally blunt with you, we neglected to bring it forward to you. We missed it this year. Um, and we're just catching up. Thank you. Do we have a motion? I um, move that we approve the HMH renewal contract. Thank you, Dr. Clinch. Motions. Uh, do we have a second? Jesse and on the seconds. Jesse and on the seconds. Uh, roll call, Dr. Clinch. Aye. Bruce Brennan. Aye. Bella Mijares. Aye. Uh, Jesse Hernandez. Aye. And the Lord of Sendejo. Yes. Uh, motion passes. Uh, third uh, action item, discuss and consider approval of purchase of over 50000 for a uh, campus ice station. Superintendent Eads? Uh, once again, this is just the annual re renewal that we have of the contract with them, and it always exceeds more than $50,000, and so we're bringing it forward to you this time. Thank you. I will motion to approve the uh, ice station, the campus ice station purchase over fifty thousand. Do we have a second? Velia Minhares, I second. Is Velia Minhares seconds? Uh, roll call here. Dr. Clinch, aye. Bruce Brennan, aye. Velia Minhares, aye. Jesse Hernandez, aye. And Dolores Sendejo, uh, yes, motion passes. I believe that's our third uh, final Correct. action item. Superintendent Eads, did you say something there? No, I said correct. No, I said you're correct, okay. ma'am. I have, uh, I don't, I'm not looking at the camera, I'm looking at my document, so that's probably why I can't see there. Um, we're gonna move on to closed a meeting. The board will adjourn to closed meeting in accordance with the Texas Opens Meetings Act, Texas Government Code 551.074 and 551.074. A, uh, pursuant to Texas Government Code 551.074, consider and take possible action regarding approval of administrators, uh, teachers, nurses, librarians, and counselor contracts for the 2020-2021 school year. B, pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.074, consider and discuss hiring superintendent and approval of superintendent contract. And C, pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.074, consider and discuss superintendent transition plan. The time is now uh, 6.42 p.m. Ms. Sandel, uh, we will have uh, Ms. Sharon Fury join us at the beginning of closed session, then she'll leave after item A. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank I do believe you. the the team has a separate link to join. We'll give a couple of minutes to transition over. Uh, thank you. Again, Ms. Luann, that was 642, and I did write that down. Thank you. See everyone uh, in a bit. I got it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Osborne. Your mic's still turned off. Hey, who are you? <laughs> You're not recognizing me because I'm growing a mullet. Ah, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> not on purpose. It's because I can't get a haircut. <laughs> mm. Everything all right? Yes, sir. How about yourself? Uh, ready to get back to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. Let me, Dr. Clinch, you do know that you have to log in to a separate